Hey, I'm Jay Royster, and today we are at Cask, an Italian helmet manufacturer, meeting with my good friend, Parker Melvin, owner of Eagle Commercial Realty, who represented Cask in the transaction. He's going to tell us about the project and how the deal came to be. So let's go check it out. Thousand square foot building, yeah. Beautiful adaptive reuse deal. North American headquarters for Cask, Italian helmet manufacturer. Before we get into that, learn more about the building. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Parker, and Eagle Commercial. After about ten years with big firms, I started Eagle uh, about five years ago. We focus on really serving investors and businesses who have office and industrial needs. Uh, and we spend a lot of time working in the in-town areas, particularly urban districts like South End. Tell us a little bit about CASC, how you got connected with them. So it was 2000 and, let's see, 17. It was uh, kind of early spring. They toured a property, the Charlotte Cotton Mill that I was leasing downtown. And one of the Italian officers was here, as well as their two local leaders. They toured. And they said, yeah, we're from Italy. And I said, I just went to Italy for the first time. And we had this great kind of initial connection. I told them all the places I'd been and was just, I was frankly just really enjoying the conversation. Uh, the space that we toured for them, it just didn't end up working for their needs. But since they didn't have a broker, I said, hey, if I could help you, I'd love to. As we got synced up, it kind of transitioned from a lease search to a purchase search. And they really, uh, we're excited about South Hint, and so we really started to dig in at that point to see what was available uh, to purchase and to create this facility. So Parker, how did you continue to develop the relationship after meeting Cask, then becoming a client of yours? Uh, tell us about how that relationship uh, was further developed into, into being their representative. Yeah. So after we toured the cotton mill together, and I was just showing them space, I had asked if, if they might need someone to help them consider other options. They said they would appreciate that. I was really just in the beginnings of them getting to know me and starting to show them properties. And uh, they have a funny story about me that I actually didn't realize at the time. <laughs> so from their perspective of the story, they said, yeah, we, you picked up the phone and you said that you had to go to an appointment and you would call back later. And then I think I didn't call back for a little while. Initially, they thought that I was too busy for them, oh, You're big you know, time, yeah. I'm big time in them. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how anybody would meet a one-man band and think they're getting big timed. Right. But yeah, that's the ironic part, being an entrepreneurial uh, broker. You're, 100, you're total, totally 100% dedicated 100%, to yeah, clients. They, yeah, they know better now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what happened was I was walking into the doctor's appointment with my wife, who is like 39 weeks pregnant. And so <laughs> I should have told them the, the, the full details, but instead they thought I was just heading to some bigger client meeting and, yeah. and they later uh, found out. So I think in that moment, they actually talked about like, is Parker, you know, is he focused on us? Is he gonna help us? <laughs> You're only having your first child here. Yeah, <laughs> so as always in real estate, the final product always looks great. I mean, this is an awesome building, but the story along the way, there's some there's some stories about how things were a little tenuous early on. It's not an overnight success. It's, it's not a, an overnight success. It's a multi-year relationship. Yeah, and it's a, a process. And it'll continue to be a, a long lasting relationship. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so, you know, one of the interesting things for me personally is I've driven by this building probably hundreds of times yeah. and never stepped foot in it once. And so it's really a hidden gem in the Gold District. It's in the Wilmore Historic District. Yeah. Obviously, walkable, a great amenity that everything South End has to offer. Yeah. Uh, but the unique thing to me is there's tons of multifamily here, townhomes, very vertical projects yeah. uh, in this area, but you've got an Italian helmet manufacturer right here. So right. A, little, a little unique in that regard. You know, we, we secured this facility in 17 for them. And if you look back, that was a, that was a big three years ago. Mm -hmm. A lot has changed since then. And, and now they actually look like they were early in the sense that they saw what was going to come. I think the Gold District is just getting started. They were fortunate to get this building when they did. The site size here? Yeah, so it's, it's a little over half an acre. Over half an acre, just under 9,000 square feet. That's right. Okay. So did they need the full 9,000 or did they have a little room? And yeah. I guess one of the interesting things about that is now in the environment that we're in with, with COVID, yeah. 
spacing, has, has that played out to, to be advantageous for them? Yeah, so they went a little bigger here than they needed to, but they, they felt confident that it was going to be worth it. There's actually a space in the back of the building that's about 2,000 feet that we thought about leasing at some point. But really, they're going to keep it for growth, and, and I think they have a gym back there right now. So this is their North American headquarters, yeah. and they're based in Italy. So they're based outside of Milan and Bergamo. That was, that's the epicenter where the Italian pandemic hit. And so they as a company were right there on the front lines of wow. just seeing, seeing what was happening as the world was coming aware of what, of what the deal was. So how are they doing now since, since opening here? I see equestrian helmets, bicycle helmets, motorcycle helmets. Yeah. Their business is their high-end helmet manufacturers, mainly for sport, uh, biking, skiing, uh, you see really nice equestrian stuff. They have a, a construction helmet product line as well, and they're doing great. I mean, they're a high-end product. They're very, you know, I've met the owner of the company. He's an incredibly talented designer. He's actively involved in designing these products. That's really his gift. He clearly is good at what he does. The Tour de France winner last year, and this was a big deal for Cask, was wearing a Cask helmet. Wow. And so to, to kind of be in the bike helmet business and, you know, to have that kind of uh, feather in your cap was a, was that's, a big deal. That's so. nice marketing. Yeah. It's good, so, good marketing for Cass. Exactly. Tour de France. You all finding this specific building, how did that come to be? How did this deal come together yeah. transactionally? Yeah. So the truth is, uh, I have to give the client credit where credit's due. So they actually pointed at this building and they said, let's go find out about that facility. So I said, okay. I drove here. There was a sign on the front of the building that said, we have moved and no phone number, no nothing. Building's completely dark and empty. Uh, former radiator shop. Previous owners had been here uh, 25 years. Bought the building for, I think, $225,000 in okay. 1993. Good investment. Very good investment Good, for them. good foresight. Very good investment. Yeah, they, <laughs> they knew exactly what was gonna happen, I'm yeah, sure, 25 yeah. years ago. So I, I found a way to contact them. Uh, Nancy and Rick Hartzell, very sweet and kind people. Mm -hmm. uh, Nancy answered the phone. We set up a tour. We, they walked us through the building. They were clearly open to selling, but they wanted essentially the highest number that South End had seen for an empty building that was really just in shell condition. They were looking to set a comp. They were looking to be the top of the market. And Rightfully they, so. And they, they, were, <laughs> they were not wrong. <laughs> so it's really interesting looking back. Uh, I later learned that they had been talking to, I knew they were talking to some other people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who. But I found out that one of them was the common market, which I thought, looking back, it makes total sense. The location, the parking, everything. Great. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in some ways, I, it would have been cool to see what the common market would have done with it. Yeah, because they love old buildings, repurposing. Yeah, just the high ceilings. Cool, cool feel, culture, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's, just, it's got that feel. <clears throat> the fact that the common market wanted it is usually a good sign, right? Because they're, they're And they not ended gonna, up on Tremont. And yeah. Adaptive reuse project there they as did, well. They so. did just fine. This really stood out because of its unique architectural capability or what it could what it could support for them. Matter of fact, I rode by this building, gosh, for five, ten years and always thought someday that's gonna be something cool. I didn't really dream that I would be a part of it. Right. But I just you kinda knew because this building sat close to the street, it had the it, you know, it had especially high ceilings and uh, it just looked like it was ready for somebody to do something when it would sell eventually. The owner of this company is, is, is financially able to do really cool things with just his investment in the space. And so I think for him, it was much more about, am I gonna create a, a physical presence that helps to tell Cask's story? Um, all these helmets are manufactured in Italy. And so really to call it a manufacturer it is, but here locally, it's, it's really office and then a, and then a distribution use. And so, this is their showroom, and then they have a separate warehouse down in, uh, in Southwest Charlotte, but it's all about creating that showroom. Were there any challenges in working with Cask from a cultural standpoint? Yeah. A way of doing business here versus Italy? You know, you've got a European company doing business in, in the United yeah, States. Yeah. As far as the transaction went, were there any cultural challenges with the letter of intent, the purchase and sale agreement, yeah. anything like that? Anything that was related to coordinating internationally, because there, there were times we needed to kind of wait to talk to Italy. Mm -hmm. I would say all of that really was completely secondary to the fact that they as people and as a company are first class. 
I was able to do my job knowing they were going to make it easy for me with their ability to follow through, to focus on the big picture. The great thing about working with a business as opposed to an investor in, in situations like this is the business really cares about the whole picture and they're not kind of caught up on each little piece that hops up and might cost them money. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, this was not an open checkbook and there was a lot of work done along the way to make sure that they really didn't blow the budget. Working with businesses is extremely fun because they, ultimately, you're facilitating something they want to do and they need to do. Right, the real estate is a piece to the yeah. bigger macro puzzle. It reflects something about them. Versus investors, developers, the real estate is, is primary, yeah. top of the mind. That's right. Versus an ancillary piece of the puzzle. Yeah, and, and so I think that, that was a huge part of this. Yeah, very, very interesting. So, 2017 was the purchase? So they, they wanted a contract in July of 17. Uh, I was driving to a vacation and they called and said they were going to sign the contract, which took some time. Going on vacation, that's a I stopped. That's an exciting way to go on vacation. <laughs> I stopped on the side of the road and I, I I put that PDF together and I sent it to the client and made sure that we had it sealed up quickly. Yeah, so we went under contract July 17 based on how the timing of the new property worked out. Uh, we closed that sale in January and then closed Casks purchase of this building two weeks after that. Well, great. So, what is Eagle Commercial looking forward to working on in the future, 2021, 2022, and beyond? It takes yeah. a long time to get deals done. You gotta, you gotta keep a full pipeline. But what is, what is Eagle Commercial gonna focus on moving forward? We'll continue to try to be active in, in these markets, and we will be. And in the meantime, you know, as, as South End continues to become more of a corporate market, which is less of what I cover then I'll continue to, to figure out what, where's the next entrepreneurial you know, growth pattern. Charlotte has great fundamentals. South End, clearly one of the hottest sub-markets in the Southeast, may, maybe America. Yeah. I think there's, there's still a lot of good runway and a lot, of other, yeah. a lot of other great corridors in Charlotte. Yeah, me too. I think what's interesting about working in South End is that I'm one of the biggest cheerleaders for this area and I believe in it and I have for a long time. But even then, I still underestimate what's possible. Mm -hmm. And you look at like where we're getting with these towers going up, you know, it all makes sense now. But I think if anyone saw that happening five years ago, they had foresight that I just, you know, I didn't have. I'd say uh, you'd be hard pressed to find many people that yeah. had the foresight to see what's happened here yeah. five years ago. That's right. I guess that's the nature of being so focused on what's happening today as you sometimes can miss what's what's coming in, in, in you know in a few years, but um, yeah. And then you look cool. at you look at lower South End now as a part yeah. of South End and the gap that's being bridged at Scaly Bar. Yeah, uh, lower South End has just as much momentum, and I could argue is just as hot as South End now. Yeah. Well, you're pioneering that, so <laughs> trying to close some deals. Yeah. The harder Jay works, the quickly uh, more quickly South End grows. <laughs> Well, Parker, thank you for taking your time today to sit down and tell us about the North American headquarters for CASC. It's a, a beautiful building, really cool adaptive reuse project, and I know South End and Charlotte's lucky to have it, so thanks for taking the time to thanks, tell us thank, about it. Thanks for having me, man. Really, really honored to get to share their story and uh, spend some time with you, so appreciate it. Yeah, likewise, and look forward to continued success with CASC and for Eagle Commercial. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it.